right, here's the plan. I need to build a kitchen from start to finish, and I need to do it in my garage with the limited tools that I have. And I want this kitchen to kind of look like the Pinterest photos that I've been looking at. Mid-century, timber grain, that kind of thing. And kind of inspired by the kitchen that was already here when we moved in. And the great thing is that kitchen can stay in place because we have completely renovated this room in order to build this new kitchen. We had to put in an eight and a half meter beam to knock out a room. And now we're ready to build a new kitchen. <laughs> I've never built a kitchen before, so I've got to figure a lot of things out. So here's my system. Get the sides. And this is the base here. We're just going to pin it. So the back is 16 mil. Look how solid it is, just with pins. So yeah, that's how I'm building them. But obviously I'm gonna add some screws now, and it's gonna be even stronger. Tell you what, from my extremely limited kitchen building experience, one kitchen, I think it's harder to put the kitchen in than it is to build the kitchen. When you're building cabinets, you're working with square and you know straight lines, square cuts. But then when you go to assemble it inside a house with wonky floors, all the cabinets have to butt up to one another, and then you start struggling. There we go. Yeah, see, that's the click they're talking about. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Uh, is that why it was so expensive? <laughs> <laughs> you want to hold it differently? Yeah. I'll just hold it awkwardly like this. <laughs> well, we, we can work this way. No, that's right. Don't forget to breathe, Scott. <laughs> Now a big decision that we had to make for this kitchen is what the front was going to be. We contemplated hardwood, but we ultimately decided to go for plywood just because it's easier. And Maranti plywood is what we chose. I like the warm texture of the timber, but I would hesitate to recommend it. It's very splintery. That has been our biggest challenge. Honestly, even when you're sanding the edges, I'm just sanding the edges of this dishwasher front and that's how splintery this plywood is. Look at that, it just lifted up the edge completely. But it looks so good.
Somebody gave me great advice. When you're putting the dishwasher front on, cut it oversized. Mount it, get in position, and then cut it to the correct size. Before I oil these ones, I need to do something that I've been putting off, which is cutting a hole in the front of them. <sighs> See, I feel like I've done such a good job with the fronts of these cabinets, the grain matching and all that kind of stuff. So to go ahead now and screw it up would be very disappointing. So this is the area where the hob is going to be, and it's an induction hob that has a motor underneath. And when you really crank the motor up, you can get the heat up. When we built this cabinet, we built in a 20mm gap at the back and that 20mm gap goes all the way down to the floor. So it allows cold air to come in under the kickboard, come up the 20mm gap at the back, but all that heat needs to go somewhere. And that somewhere is out the front here where the beautiful drawer fronts are. After all the effort of grain matching the plywood, if I slip when I make this cut, I kind of have to start this part again. Well, with that in mind, let's do it. So one thing that's helped as I oil the fronts and edges of the cabinets is this Nomar scratch pad. It's the same thing you'd wash your dishes with, I guess. And I've already put one coat on this one, and I'm just using a scratch pad to smooth out the little bits of wood grain that sort of lift off after you've put the oil on. Just had to pull a few things apart here because the bench top is arriving now. And one thing I notice is just how much the sun changes this timber. Check this out. That part was behind the cabinet and that part was exposed to the sun. Needs a three mil trim. We're taking it back to the workshop. Oh, end of the year, last video. It's gonna do two videos, but the way this one's going, I think I'll be very lucky if I do the second. And we're waiting for this bench top for a while and we couldn't get an install date. And it's been pushing all the other trades closer and closer to Christmas. So that little window 
where the plumber and the electrician have to come in and do their thing has been closing closer and closer. So when the bench top arrived and they had to take it away and trim it, ah, inside I'm like, no. On the outside I'm like, all right, sweet ass. Anyway, stressful. But you know what doesn't need to be stressful? Building a website with Squarespace. Squarespace are a great platform for building your online presence and running your business. So far this kitchen's going well and if I decided to turn it into a business, I could create a beautiful professional looking website using Squarespace. They have templates and galleries to really showcase your skills. And they also have domain names built in so I could search for scottbrownkitchens.com and Presumably it will be there and I can buy it all inside the Squarespace platform and start my new venture. Squarespace also provides search optimization tools. If I wanted to monitor how Scott Brown Kitchens tracks on search engines, I could do that inside Squarespace. It's, it's really handy. I'm probably not gonna make this website or a kitchen building business. I'm probably gonna stick to building houses. But if you wanted to try out this website building platform for yourself, Squarespace also offer a free trial. So there's nothing to lose. And when you're ready to launch your website, head over to squarespace.com forward slash Scott Brown Carpentry, and that way you can get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's see if this bench top is gonna make it. Oh my God. So we went and had an early Christmas up in Auckland, and that means I, I couldn't film them putting the bench top in. But now look at this! Oh my gosh! This actually looks awesome. Ah, oh, they left the silicon here, that's good. That means I can do this now. <laughs> that is beautiful. This second coat was still drying, but we got the electrician coming potentially this afternoon and the plumber as well. So I need to get these things in. Who's here? Hey, Hey, buddy, how's it going? Hey, man, are you? Here's uh, here's the plumbers, Aaron and Windsor. How's it going, mate? Hello. I was just saying to Aaron that I was nervous that I wasn't going to get you guys in before Christmas. Oh, you're lucky. You're yeah, lucky. I'm a lucky guy. Poor Armando's got to go up there in the summer heat. Oh. Over 40. How many what? Over 40 degrees up there. Yeah. I do not envy you. We might have a working kitchen today. Look at that. Pretty good. Good morning. Oh, hey, buddy. Good, how are you? Yeah. What do you think? Ah, look at you. What do you think of the beautiful kitchen, Raymond? Again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been uh, giving you compliments for like hours already. Yeah. No, it's beautiful. But I didn't record any of those compliments. Yeah. I think there's there's detailing in here that's just uh, above par and um, yeah. I mean the the Maranti looks beautiful. Done an outstanding job. You should we have done an outstanding job. You, you got job. skills here, man. You should do something with it. <laughs> We built a kitchen. We built an entire kitchen. It's so nice. <laughs> I'm almost in shock, to be honest. After years of just really 
crappy like rental kitchens to suddenly have something so nice. I'm almost scared to use it. Yeah? <laughs> to cook in it, yeah. I know what you mean. I, I felt a similar way. And what if we get it dirty? <laughs> there are downsides to having nice things, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> One uh, thing that I totally underestimated, if you're going to build a kitchen, use pre-finished timber. You can get plywood that's already stained and oiled. Um, we didn't have an option that we liked, so that's why we didn't go down that road, but having to build the whole thing and then put two coats of oil on both sides, I think that's why this thing took so long. That took like a week. Yeah. Just a week of oiling. No dis disrespect. Yeah. But I was like, so what are you doing today? I'm oiling. Well, still. I'm so happy with how it turned out. Yeah, you should be. It looks, it, yeah, it's amazing. It's so beautiful. You have done such a good job. I'm actually a bit overwhelmed. So cost, we should probably talk about cost. How much does it cost? <laughs> uh, about 24,000 New Zealand dollars. So that is including all of the materials, raised labor, the sink, the tap, the bench, but not appliances and not Scott's labor. Yeah, I was gonna say. Because we just don't even know how to quantify that. I don't even know how many hours I spent. And it wasn't structured like Monday to Friday, it was just all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and that oiling, I mean, a week. Yeah, so, yeah. I was gonna say, to, to give you an idea, I think this would probably be a $45,000 kitchen. It's so hard to say because we never got any quotes. It wasn't a very efficient way of building it. We didn't have a CNC machine or... Yeah. Yeah. But a friend of ours got a quote from a local company for a kitchen double the size of this, but not with plywood. It was MDF, I think. Yeah. And that was about $45,000. So that kind of makes us feel like we've built a premium kitchen with premium materials, but for a more budget price. Yeah. Yeah. If you've done any kitchen renovations, Maybe you're... I would love to know how much you spend. Yeah, maybe you'll yeah. have a better idea than us. Did we save money? <laughs> we did save some money on this. This is the range hood that I haven't installed yet. So Schweigen. So we joined a company called CBS at, that gives group home discounts to builders like me. The range hood, the tap, and the sink together, I think we saved about $1,400? Yeah, $1,400 from the retail price. From the retail price. So if you're like a small builder in New Zealand, that might be worth checking out. And we still have to decide on a splashback, so mm -hmm. if you have any ideas, we want something kind of neutral, right? We've got a lot of colors going on. We here. wanted a continuation of the bench top, but it was just way too expensive. So yeah. maybe tiles? Again, if you've renovated a kitchen and you've got a good idea for a splashback, we're all ears. Um, if you want to know anything about this video that wasn't made clear, let me know and I'll add it to the description as the questions come up, you know, like w what products we use, etc. This is a Caesar stone bench top, if you're wondering. Osmo oil for the cabinets, brass handles. Maranti ply. Yeah, Maranti ply. Blood, sweat and tears, <laughs> not included. Uh, I'm really proud of you. Yeah, you did an amazing job. Mm, looking forward to cooking in it. Yeah.